Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race, Race and Strategy Guide. We're off to Croatia and we're off to Dragon Trail Gardens in particular and it's in the Group 4 machinery for a combination I do not believe we've ever done in Gran Turismo 7 as a Daily Race. It's not a sort of track we visit very often in general but we have been here in the Group 3 cars in the past. But in terms of setting, we have 11 laps to get round. Tie wear is at times 6, fuel is at times 3. Just the racing medium tyres available as is pretty much the norm now. Uh, very rarely do we get a mix of tyres for the race seat because of the obvious problems. Uh, there is a mandatory pit stop which is pretty standard at the moment. BOP is on, damage is light, it's a rolling start, slipstream is real. And there is a plethora of settings in this one in terms of brake balance, your suspension and your differential which will please and disappoint people in equal numbers I'm sure. So I had a lot of few minutes to kind of warm up for this one before the race got started at 8 o'clock so I decided to pop into the pits a couple of times and just measure the tyre change time versus the non-tyre change time because in these races this tends to be quite an important aspect and I wanted to go into this race armed with this knowledge so as a pretty tricky pit entry into Dragon Trail Gardens you have to make sure you get the car thrown over to the left hand side to avoid cutting the white line and if you change the tyres, you're going to be stationary for 3.8 seconds. Now, if you don't change the tyres, let's see how much time you can save if this strategy is a possibility. Now, this kind of time difference between the no tyre change and the tyre change does differ from track to track, so it's always important to test this out because it's kind of vital information to have in terms of formulating your strategy. Now, the no tyre change time is 1.8 seconds, so the difference between changing the tyres and not changing the tyres is only 2 seconds, which is a lot less than something, for example, like Watkins Glen, which was the last time we were in the Group 4 cars, where it was more like 4.6 seconds, I believe, to change the tyres. So, that is, a, that is a big difference and it's going to be crucial to the strategy and the way you approach this race, I think, going forward this week. Anyways, we are now into the race here. We jumped into the Honda NSX. Uh, tire wear is going to be important in this one, so it does tend to be the cars that are good on tires that should come to the fore. But with just that kind of small difference between changing the tires and not changing the tires, it should allow the cars that are not so good on tires at least to be competitive because they can change the tires, which is always a good thing. It shouldn't be quite the same case as back at Watkins Glen where basically the Alfa Romeo 4C had such a big advantage over the, the rest of the grid because it was really the only car that could keep that sort of tyre wear above or below a certain point in order to keep the tyres pretty much acting as if they were uh, fresh for the entirety of the race. It shouldn't quite be the case in this one. Even though the Alfa Romeo 4C will have very good tyre wear obviously, you're only losing two seconds in the pits to change the tyres and that does make a crucial difference to your car choice. Although two seconds in a Group 4 race can be quite a lot, these races can be very close indeed. Anyways, coming down into the hairpin for the first time, we're going to get it stopped nice and early, we're going to get a nice run, I think we started in P13 in this one, and we've managed to jump a couple of cars into the hairpin as people get tangled up with each other or kind of just get a slow exit as they maybe get compromised by another car. That's going to move us up into P11, which is very nice indeed. Obviously, a lot of the TCR boys out here as well. We've got Titchin in front of us. We've got Shelty as well. Sonic's in this one. Hogson's in this one, as well as probably a few others. We've got friends of the channel, Tonic, who's Apex Twin, up there in the Lamborghini. But at this point, a decent selection of cars. We've got a Lamborghini, a Megane uh, Trophy. We've got a Shelty in his usual... Uh, Scirocco there, we're in the NSX, I believe there was people in McLarens, Citroen's at the front, so always, it's kind of always the case to be honest with you, these early, early races tend to have a better selection of cars until a certain car comes to the fore, or a certain couple of cars come to the fore that tend to become the metas and dominate for the rest of the week. But lap one is complete and we're having a nice battle here between Tonic, Tijney, Shelty and myself and it's going to get well, messy is not quite the word, but we're certainly going to uh, compromise ourselves quite badly. We are 1.5 seconds ahead of the Austrian in P12. But yeah, going side by side here, through the chicane between the TCR drivers, it does slow us down dramatically. Torix managed to pick up a half second penalty from cutting the the corner on the chicane there, obviously. And I, I quite like that chicane, to be honest with you, because it's one of these corners where it's a risk-reward. But come down into the hairpin here, 
Shelty and Tidgen are still going to go at it. We're going all the way around the outside of Shelty. He gives us the racing room as we move up into P10, which is not a bad start as we're halfway through lap two. But it's definitely not over here yet for uh, Shelty. We've got a little bit of drivers compromising themselves up ahead. Torix a little bit slow coming into this kind of left-right-left left sequence. And as we get a bit of a poor exit, Shelty's going to come down the inside. Obviously, we see him at the last second, pull to the, the outside to give him the room. And he launches one down the inside of uh, Tonic and Tidgeny as well. He's actually overtaking three of us there in one corner. Maybe a little bit of a steward's inquiry required for the launch down the inside into uh, Tonic's Lamborghini there. But he's made it work for him and Shelty is up into P8. However, all that racing has cost us so much time. We were 1.7 seconds ahead of DJ in the Renault McGann cockroach behind us. Yeah, so losing a lot of time and Tidgeny wisely slots off to the left-hand side to make his mandatory pit stop. Uh, nice and early, obviously going for the no tyre change strategy. My plan here was to change the tyres because I was thinking the tyres would be pretty worn by the end and with only two seconds lost in the pits, that was definitely my plan to get to at least lap four before I kind of started thinking about that pit stop. We've got another NSX off the track up ahead of us and unfortunately that is going to lead to our demise. He's slow off the corner, gets a little bit of a bounce, we do tap him and then it's just one of those awkward situations where we are in the wrong place at the wrong time. I could maybe have dealt with that one a little bit better myself. We did tap the, uh, I think that's a Slovakian or a Slovenian flag. Uh, I could be wrong. It's definitely somewhere within that region. Uh, but yeah, the, the driver waits for us, obviously. Didn't mean that to happen. As I said, I could maybe have dealt with it a little bit better. We did sort of bump them in the back, but they came off the corner so awkwardly, off the sausage so awkwardly. It wasn't really anything I could do to really avoid it. Anyways, one lap later, I decided let's get into the pitch, change these tyres and uh, see if we can recover anything from this. We lost about 13, 14 seconds. So it was effectively race over. Now, I do want to reiterate when you're coming into this pit lane, it's not really a pit lane that you can decide to pit at the last second. You kind of have to, as you come into the last corner, be committed to the pit lane and get the car over to the left hand side because that white line does come up very fast. Now your pit loss for this one, uh, if you change the tyres as we did here is around about 16 seconds. Obviously if you don't change the tyres you save a couple of seconds and it's just going to be 14 seconds in the pits. A relatively short pit lane to be uh, honest with you, in terms of Gran Turismo 7, fuel, of course, going to be no issue whatsoever. And that was really as much as I could show you from this one. We'll just jump forward here to lap 11. The tyre wear was actually fairly severe on that front right tyre. I could really feel the true force, kind of, I could really feel the vibrations through the true force. Uh, that that tyre was working so hard and my tyre wear was actually, actually quite bad there. So definitely made the right choice by changing the tyres. Once I was able to kind of push, because the lap times were respectable enough, I was able to push and put some pressure on the tyres. I could see that tyre wear uh, and changing the tyres was definitely the right decision for me in this car. Over the line we come to finish P12, 26 seconds off the lead. As I said, we lost about 14 seconds, so we'd have been up there in kind of the, the battle with Shelty and Tidgeny, as of course we were uh, when we were, uh, before we got taken out. Uh, accidentally by the driver who very kindly apologised in the chat after the race so all good in terms of that one just a racing incident but let's move on to your strategy options essentially it's nothing particularly complicated here you've got the one stop with no tyre change you saved two seconds in the pits which is not a lot and I did check a couple of the drivers who didn't change the tyres they had very bad tyres towards the end of the race so Certain cars this is going to be possible in the Megane Trophy, the Citroen, the Alfa Romeo 4C is maybe your car best cars for trying to do that strategy, but I don't think it'll be recommended to too many people out there just with how severe the tyres will be at the end and the fact it's only two seconds that you lose to change them. So the strategy I'm going to recommend for most people is to actually change the tyres. You can stop as early as lap three, optimal, you're thinking lap five. Five on the first stint, six on the second stint with a slightly lower fuel. You only lose two seconds over the non-changers. Group four races do tend to be tight, so it is possible you lose some track position, but you're going to have much more grip and confidence at the end, and hopefully you can make those positions back up. But that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Obviously, setups will play their part in this one. 
Uh, you could probably gain about half a second, seven tenths of a second. I don't really touch setups. We did this race with the stock car. I never even knew setups were available until after uh, the race had finished. I forgot to check that one. Uh, but uh, there'll be plenty of people out there. The usual suspects of the Gran Turismo community will come up with some setups. I'm sure they'll share them. And yeah, setups, you know, that you can gain a little bit of time with them. I'd say about half a second, seven tenths at most tracks. Uh, possibly helped your tyre wear a little bit as well, uh, but it's not hard to find a setup just by checking out uh, lots of uh, the channels out there. Quite happily share their setup, so don't don't miss out on them if you're looking for a little bit of an advantage. But yeah, it's not a bad race. I think the fact that the pit loss is only two seconds should mean that you can use a selection of cars, uh, which is much better than the Watkins Glen situation. Uh, and I'll definitely be streaming this one. Uh, at least a couple of times over the course of the week uh, try to pick up a bit more streaming I've not been doing too much just recently but yeah hopefully the video has been useful some way shape or form if it has please hit that like button please hit that subscribe button thank you very much for watching and I shall catch you on the next one goodbye now